Hey there, this is Math 6, Unit 6, Lesson 4. Practice solving equations and representing situations with equations. All right, so you first should begin with some number talk today, subtracting from 5, and we can see we're subtracting first 2, and then a little more than 2, and then a little more than that, and a little more than that. So these are ones that want you to try to subtract mentally. So if 5 minus 2 is 3, and now i got to go a little bit below the 3, got to duck under a little bit by 0.1, I'm going to drop that down to 2.9 because I'm going a little less than 3 to get there. Now if I have to go from 2.9 and get rid of a 0.7, that means this needs to decrease by 1 in my head mentally. And I think about 10 minus 7 is 3, so I drop that right there. Now I get to 2 and 7 eighths. Well, that one, I don't want your, your first thought it probably is, well, let's go back to decimals. Just leave it like this. This is fine. This value right here is almost 3, right? It's almost 3. So it's like 5 minus 3, but not quite, okay? So I know I'm going to have 2 left over, but instead of a 7 8, I'm left with just a 1 8 left over. And that's all I have. Why? Because 2 and 2 are 4, and 7 8 and 1 8 is 5. So just some quick little mental math to see, get you thinking a little bit there. On this first activity, what you're going to do is it wants you to work with a partner, okay? and one partner is going to solve column A and one partner solves column B. Your answers in each row should be the same. If they aren't, you want to work together to find the error and correct that to see what you come up with there. Okay? For those of you kind of working at home on your own, let's see, I'm going to do column A, you can do column B and see if you get the same answer. All right. So for A, first of all, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9, so x equals 9. On this one, I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. 17 minus 9 is 8, so x equals 8 for that one. Over here, I can divide both sides by 8. 56 divided by 8 is 7, so x equals 7. For this guy, I'll multiply both sides by 4, so that goes away. So that x is going to be equal to 4 times 21, which is 84. This guy, we're going to divide both sides by 6. So 45 divided by 6, 6 goes into there 7 times. 7 times 6 is 42 with 3 left over. 7 and 3 is 6, also known as 7 and a half. Here we're going to subtract 4 and 5 6 from 9. So x is going to be equal to, in this case here, 4 and 1 6. And that's a good one from that warm up again, right? So we're going to add the 1 6 to make a whole one, and then 4 more to make it up to 9. On this one, we'll multiply by the reciprocal, 7 fifths, 7 fifths, and that's there so you can reduce and reduce. And 11 times 7 is 77 equals x. For number whatever it is, we're going to multiply, or sorry, divide by 6. So you, have, you really have 1 fifth divided by 6. Well, 1 fifth divided by 6 is multiplying by the reciprocal, so it's times 1 six. so you really have 1 30th equals x. On the next one, we're going to subtract 2.17, which looks like a little bit like our warm up, right? And so that's going to be equal to 2.83 equals x. This guy will multiply by 9 tenths on both sides. Reduce that to 1 and 2, reduce that to 1 and 3. 3 times 2 is 6, so 6 equals x. This one, we're going to subtract 14.88 from both. And when you subtract 428, you're left with 2.17 equals x. And then finally, on this last one here, we have 3 and 3 fourths and all that good stuff there. And we have to divide it. So let's, let's rewrite this real quick. This is 12, 13, 14, 15. This is really 15 fourths x equals 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 fourths, multiplied by the reciprocal. And when you do that, the 4 is canceled, the 5 becomes a 1, that becomes a 3, and so x equals 1 third. All right, so that's column A, all done there. You're working on column B and see if your answers match those and see how you did. All right. For activity 3, it says choosing equations to match situations. It says circle all the equations that describe each situation. And if you get stuck, draw a diagram and then find the solution. So let's take a look at these. Number one, it says Claire has eight fewer books than May. 
if May is 26 books, how many books does Claire have? So, what do we know? We know that Claire has eight fewer books than May. That's what Claire has. So let's just call Claire Claire, okay? So Claire, call her X, what does she have? She has whatever May has minus eight books. Now in our case here, we know May has 26 books. So that's what she has, she has 26. 26 minus eight equals what Claire has. That's what we know to be true. So in our situation here, we don't see X equals anywhere except for right here. X equals 26 minus eight, that looks the same. But we have to find all the ones that can be the same. So can I get 26 minus X in any way? Mm, no. I can't. If I got if I put the 26 over there, I'm subtracting. That'd be x minus 26 equals 8. So that's not going to work there. But what if I put the 8 over there? I would add 8 to x. I see x plus 8 equals 26, so that would work. And this one is just not going to work. That's the wrong way. And this one here, 26 minus x equals 8. Hmm, that's a tough one there. Can I get that to work out in any way? Can I get 26 minus x equals 8? Sure I can. Watch this. If x equals 26 minus 8 here, I could add 8, add 8, so now I have 8 plus x equals 26. If I subtract x from both sides, then 8 equals 26 minus x. So yeah, I can get that one to show up as well. So to solve it, let's just solve it real quick. Well, we can do 26 minus 8, which is right there, and 26 minus 8 is actually equal to 18. For number two, it says coach form teams of eight from all the players in the soccer league. There are 14 teams. How many players are in the league? So what do we know? That there are 14 groups of eight soccer players and all together that's going to be how many we're using why there are all together. So we have 14 groups of eight or 14 times eight equals y. And we can see that one right there. Are there other ways to write this? Sure. If I divide both sides by 8, I get 14 equals y over 8. I can see that one right there. Okay. If I rewrite this one, I can think about 1 8 is the same as y divided by 8, so this one would also work. I definitely can't do that because this is 14 times 8. I can't do 14 divided by 8. So that won't work at all. As a solution then, well, well, what is 14 times 8? 14 times 8 happens to be 112. For number 3, it says Karen scored 223 more points in a computer game than Tyler. Right? Way to go. So what does Karen have? Karen has 223 more points than Tyler. If Kieran scored 409 points, so 409, put that right there, how many did Tyler score? So we have 409 equals 223 plus T, or in this case here it says Z. So we can see that right there. Can I ever get the 223 to join that by being adding? No, it'd be a subtraction, so no. If I subtract it, it looks like that. And if I want to get the 223 by itself, I would subtract Z from both sides, so it would look like that. So as a solution, 409 minus 223 is actually equal to 186. And finally, May ran 27 miles last week, which was three times as far as Jada ran. Wow, way to go. So she did 27, and that equals three times whatever Jada did. Now Jada did con W, so we'll do that one. All right, do I see 3W equals 27? Sure do, it's right there. Can I get W by itself? Yeah, if I divide by three, divide by 3, divide by 3, so 27 divided by 3 is there, which is the same as multiplying by a third. That's multiplying by the reciprocal. Definitely not that one there, that's not going to work. And 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. So for the lesson today, the big thing is that writing and solving equations can help us answer questions about different situations. So it's good to be able to write out those equations and solve them to the best of your abilities and just work them out. Sometimes you have to draw pictures, that helps you, that's awesome. But then there are multiple ways of solving a problem. So stick at it and persevere until you get it right. I'm gonna pause there, let you get started on your homework, and we'll check it together in just a moment.
All right, select all the equations that describe each situation, then find the solution. All right, looking for more than one probably. Kieran's backpack weighs three pounds less than Claire's backpack. All right, so what do we know? Kieran's backpack weighs three pounds less than Claire's. So it's Claire's minus three. Now Claire's backpack weighs 14 pounds. So 14 pounds minus three equals what Kieran's weighs. So we know that. Now, so I can see that one right here. X equals 14 minus three. Can I write that in any other way? Well, if I, can I get the X and three together like this one? Is that a possibility? Sure. If I add three to both sides, then I have K plus three equals 14. So I can make that happen. Can I get the three connected to the K in any way, like a multiplication or a division? No, that's not gonna work. So those are gonna be the right way. Now it says find a solution. Sure, find a solution. So we subtract three, we subtract three, and we have 11 equals K, or in this case here, X. For B, it says each notebook contains 60 sheets of paper. Andre has five notebooks. So we have 60 sheets of paper in five notebooks. How many does he have? Well, 60 times five, which is gonna be right here, right there. Okay, let's see this one, 60 divided by five. That's not gonna be possible, so we'd say no to that. Can I get y divided by five? Sure, if I divide both sides by five, I end up with y over five equals 60. That would work. Can I get five times y equals 60? No, I can only divide it. So those two are the best ones. So what is five times 60? That's gonna be equal to 300. Number two, solve each equation. So first of all, we have two x equals five, divide both sides by two, x equals five halves, or two and a half. B, y plus 1.8 equals 14.7. We're gonna subtract 1.8 from both sides. I'm going to borrow there. 17 minus 8 is 9. 3 minus 1 is 2 with a 1 there. So y equals 12.9. On this one we have 6 equals 1 half of z. Multiply both sides by 2 so that cancels. And z equals 2 times 2, 2 times 6 which is 12. And our last one, 3 and 1 fourth equals 1 half plus w. I'm going to subtract a half from both of these. And three and one fourth minus a half. Well, half is twice a one fourth. So I get rid of the, the one fourth and I gotta keep going down one more fourth. So I get three, two, sorry, and three fourths equals W. And you can solve that doing your own way if you choose to. All right, and one more on the back page for me. Maybe not your back page. As the books get adjusted throughout the years, might be a little different, but last one. To solve this, we have 2.5t equals 10. We'll divide both sides by 2.5. t then equals four. All right, great. Number three, for each equation, draw a tape diagram that represents it. All right, so the first one, three x equals 18. So this is gonna be three groups of x equals 18. This one is three plus an X equals 18. And this one, we can say we're gonna have a whole thing of 17, and we have a six, and we have an X, just like that, okay? That's the idea. For four, we're gonna find each product, 2.12 times one, times 0 0.002, we're going to 2.2 times 0 0.02. Two times two is four, two times one is two, two times two is four, zero, all the way down. And we have one, two, three by the decimal, so we'll go one, two, three, and we have 0 0.424 as a solution there. For B, we do 2.05 times 0 0.004, Four times five is 20. Four times zero is zero. 
bring down to two, and four times two is eight. Now I have one, two, three, four, five behind the decimal, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, decimal. Fill in these spaces with zeros, so I have point zero zero eight two zero. And the last one here for the day, for a science experiment, students need to find 25% of 60 grams. Jada says, I can find this by calculating 1 fourth of 60. Andre says 25% means 25 out of 100 times 60. Lynn says both work. Do you agree with Lynn? Well, let's take a look. Well, 25% is the same as 0.25. Now, for Jada, she did 1 fourth. 1 fourth has a value of 0.25, so that's going to work out. Now, for Andre, he did 25 out of 100, which again has a value of 25 hundredths. It's the same thing. Okay, so both of them are saying the same thing. They're both multiplying by 60, so we would agree with Lynn that both of their methods are going to work out just fine. Alright, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.